The Quumzy K2, Productivity Accelerator, Second Screen Wizard, or just Quumzy Execution? You be the judge. <laughs> Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Computer workers the world over are always looking for tools to speed up their productivity. You'll often find 3D mice next to CAD workstations, jog dials on the desks of video editors, and a stream deck just about everywhere else. Back in 2020, Asus thought they had the ultimate solution by adding an ultra-wide touchscreen above the keyboard on their laptops, allowing users to place commonly used tools on an easily reachable surface. And that definitely seems to be the inspiration for the Quumzy K2. At $370, the Quumzy K2 makes for one expensive keyboard, featuring a 72% layout and individually lit RGB Gateron Blue mechanical switches. The aluminum housing does give the K2 a fairly premium feel, and helps provide an incredibly rigid base, allowing little to no deck flex on the keyboard when typing. But of course, the main appeal of this keyboard isn't the typing surface, it's the 12.6 inch full multi-touch LCD dominating the upper half of the unit. It features a 1920 by 515 ultra wide resolution, 10 point touch screen, and USB-C connectivity for easily attaching to a laptop or desktop. If you don't have a device capable of video over USB-C, there's also an included HDMI and dual USB breakout cable, though it's not nearly as elegant of a solution. Also around the back are a pair of USB 2.0 ports courtesy of the internal USB hub. Now, Quumzy themselves don't provide any software for using the touchscreen on the K2, just a host of ideas on how you might implement it. And I have to say, I was very excited to try some of these out. Things like adding your Photoshop toolbar to the touchscreen, your Premiere timeline or audio level controls for video editing, OBS scene switching for live stream controls. Personally, I was excited just to try out a new interface option, as you never know what's going to jive with your workflow until you try it. But let's circle back to that lack of software support I mentioned earlier. As it turns out, hardware is nothing if there's no software to support it. While the Quumzy K2 is a cool combination of hardware, inspiration from Asus aside, it really is an outside the box solution as an additional display option. The issue is Quumzy relies on a deprecated feature of Windows 8 and Windows 10 for the device to function. In those versions of Windows, there's a tablet PC setup option in the control panel, and it's used to assign a touchscreen HID device to a particular display, linking the two together. Essentially, if touch is detected on the touchscreen input, it will automatically apply it to the display that it's assigned to. Pretty simple. And here's where things start to fall apart for the Quumzy K2. It is just a combination of off-the-shelf parts in a slick-looking case. There's no secret sauce holding everything together, as on the software side of things, it requires a Windows feature that is no longer available in Windows 11. And sure, it will be plug and play and work on just about any device with the requisite outputs, but the touchscreen and display become far less useful without dedicated support. Let's take a look at the K2 on my Windows 11 workstation. We can see the display does work and the touchscreen does recognize inputs. But in order to function as intended in Windows 11, the K2 needs to be set up as the primary display, which means the taskbar is going to take up a good percentage of real estate on the screen and any new window you open will automatically open on this screen. I don't know about you, but when I open Photoshop on my 3840 by 1440 34-inch ultra-wide display, I don't like having to drag it off of my 1920 by 515 LCD just to use it. Also, as a side effect of touch inputs being registered as mouse clicks on Windows PCs that are not set up as tablet PCs, anytime you touch the K2 screen, your mouse will be moved from your primary desktop monitor down to the K2, meaning it was probably easier and more efficient just to drag your mouse onto the K2 display yourself. As far as Mac compatibility goes, it gets worse. And as a reviewer, I kind of have to throw Quumzy under the bus for their product marketing. Their website product listings mention compatible with various devices, desktop computers, laptops, smartphones, and tablets. It is suitable for devices with type C full function interfaces, as well as computers that provide HDMI interfaces, plug and play without any drivers. On Amazon, they go a step further by including plug and play for Windows, Mac, and Android multiple times on the page. But that's really only half true. Connecting to my M1 MacBook Pro, the keyboard and display are immediately recognized and the touchscreen does work. However, macOS has no native support for multi-touch inputs, so only single touch is supported. 
Secondly, whichever screen your mouse is currently on will be the screen that your touch input will be applied to. Let's use OBS as an example. If I wanted to use the K2 to preview scenes, that is totally possible. But in order to use the touch screen, I first need to move my mouse onto the K2 display. If I'm going to do that, again, I would might as well just click on the scene that I want and move on, rather than lifting my hand off of the trackpad, pressing the scene on the K2 touchscreen, and then moving back to the trackpad and relocating my mouse on the main monitor. As a second monitor, the Quumsy K2 is usable, but extremely limited. I considered having Discord sit down here for easy access, but the ultra-wide aspect ratio, combined with only 515 vertical lines, mean you only get to view three to four lines of text at a time in chat rooms. And if someone posts a reaction GIF, it's pretty much all over for you, as you need more vertical space. So we're left with a bit of a conundrum here. Is the Quumsy K2 a good product? Looking at just the hardware, it's hard to find anything to complain about. Gateron blue switches in a 72% layout, solid foundation and aluminum enclosure, all with a 1920 by 515 10 point multi-touch display that works over USB-C. Yes, it's everything it's advertised to be. But the hardware is only half of the equation, and the only half that Quumsy maintained control of for their product. Because it relies so heavily on Windows tablet PC integration, it means that generic hardware is treated as such when plugged into any device. Whether you're using Mac OS, Android, or Windows 11, it's just a keyboard, a 515p display, and an HID touch driver with no method to actually bind them together. If you have a use case for the Quumsy K2, I would love to hear about it down in the comments below. Links for where to buy the keyboard will also be available down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this video and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. How do I replace my blood with this? Beer for today is from Lord Hobo Brewing. It is the Consolation Prize Imperial IPA, clocking in at nine and a half percent. Can't think of a better beer to have on 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. Oh, hot damn. I'm gonna be super nice. Yes. <laughs> right? All I did was lick the lip of the can. And I went, that's a winner. Not flavor wise, but intensity wise. This reminds me of like rhubarb. Um, I don't know any other way to explain it. It's not super sweet, but it is an incredibly dense flavor. IPA essential oils. <laughs> Is there a word for like flavor density? Flavor density? <laughs> like, I guess that would be like rich, but even that has its own kind. Right, exactly. Yeah, this no, that's more flavors per square inch than any other. And, and yeah, it's not any of those other f descriptors that I can come up with other than it reminds me of rhubarb. It's that super concentrated, dense. essence of flavor. <laughs> On top of that, holy crap, what an IPA. Uh, there's so much to digest here. <laughs> Boy, I don't know what flavor sticks out more, the malt or the hops. <laughs> the malt is incredible. I, I will say, on the nose, that's what you smell. Um, man. It's like fresh cut wood. This is cold weather IPA right here. The malt on this, gosh, it reminds me of like fresh cut wood. Like, like you're out in the workshop cutting spruce for firewood. It is, again, just this richly intense uh, flavor. I'm even losing grasp with words. <laughs> it's so good. Can a beverage be both dry and wet at the same time? Because there's the oils from the hops that are really clinging to my tongue, but the back end, so as you're swallowing, it leaves you actually kind of refreshed and 
not dry at all. This is such a weird, but excellent IPA. I want more. <laughs>